What's going on everyone? Today we're going over the best settings for controller players in Apex Legends Season 17. I get a lot of comments saying you guys like all my settings videos that I do every season, so this season is no exception. We're in the brand new firing range and I do have quite a few changes from the previous season, so let's just jump right into it. First off, we have Interact Prompt Style. I'm doing Default. You could do Compact if you're a more experienced player. This will basically just reduce clutter when you go over to an item and you want to pick it up, but I like the default. I like to see everything that is on screen. Button hints I have off. You can leave these on if you're not quite sure what button to press, but for me, I've been playing Apex a long time. I don't need this. Crosshair damage feedback. I have this as off. Basically, I want less clutter around my shots when I am firing. If I had this as on, there's a little bit more clutter around my crosshair. And overall, I don't want this. If you are a Watson player or a Caustic player specifically, you might want to have this as X or X with shield icon, just so you get a little more indication when someone crosses your fence or goes into your gas. But overall, I like it to have it off. Damage numbers, I always do stacking and I don't recommend you do floating. This is just going to give you the individual number. You don't want that and you definitely don't want both in my opinion, just way too many numbers on screen. I want to see the total damage I'm doing, so I do stacking. Ping capacity, I'm doing default. I find sometimes faded. I can't see what it is, so I always do default. Obituaries, I have this as on. This is your kill feed. Mini map rotation, this is very specific to me i have it as off a lot of people like to have it on so when you are moving around your mini map is rotating with the direction you're looking for me i've always had it so it's off rotation and i always have the same direction on the mini map weapon auto cycle on empty i did turn this on just for a little bit more convenience i used to have it as off but this is something new for me i do like actually to have it on and it has been proving pretty well if i do run out of ammo auto sprint on this is a huge one i think having auto sprint on is massive for your controller health you're just not going to go through those joysticks as fast if you do have it on so i definitely recommend you have auto sprint on plus you're going to be moving a little bit quicker if you do leave this as on double tap to sprint i have this as off you definitely don't want this on jetpack control i have this as hold it just feels way more natural for me to hold it when i want to go up in the air with valkyrie and let go when i want to fall down if you're not playing claw and if you're not playing with paddles i can see a lot of viability for toggle but overall i would recommend you play with paddles or play with claw when you are kind of using Valkyrie's jetpack, and I recommend hold. Incoming damage feedback, I just do 3D. Taking damage closes death box or crafting menu, always the biggest setting on here. You gotta have this as off when your armor swapping. If you get shot, if you have it on, you're gonna get pulled out of that box, maybe before you get the armor swap. If you have it as off, you're gonna be more than likely to be able to get that armor swap if you get hit once or twice. Hop up, pop up, I have this as on. You can have this as off if you know what all the hop ups do. I like to have it on, doesn't really bother me. This is gonna be something new for me and for you guys. I do recommend you use streamer mode, have this as all. Basically, this just helps you understand who is dying in the kill feed. Rather than seeing the player's names, you can see the legends that are dying. So if you know the Wraith died on this one team and then you do have a Pathfinder, say an Octane left on that team, you know exactly what legends are left because you do see the player that died and not just the player's name. Anonymous mode, I have this as disabled, usage sharing enabled, cross-platform enabled. I don't care much about these. If you don't want to share your data with the EA, you can disable this. And I think cross-platform, you basically got to have it on. Performance display, I actually recommend you turn this as on so you can see if you're lagging and why you might be lagging and what your frame rate is. I leave this as off because I'm just recording videos all the time and I don't want that extra clutter on my screen. Club advice disabled, I get a lot of them so I just leave it off. Communication filter is everybody. Reticle color, I do have a custom one which I like quite a bit. If you go in here, it's 12, 255, 12. It's like this lime green. I find it works very well on all the maps and I think it's one of the best colors you can use. I do the same thing for the laser sight as well well. Accessibility, this is all up to what you need and your needs. For me, I leave everything basically as off or normal. I will say a lot of people do use Tritonopia. They like the yellow shields and that kind of thing, but I've just been doing default for a long time now. The big one, the controller settings. Button layout, I do button puncher. Basically, this swaps melee and crouch, so my crouch is on the right stick. This basically just lets me crouch and fight with the right stick if I want to. Plus, I am using paddles, and if I remove melee from the right stick to the B button, basically, I'm not going to panic melee in a fight if I do hit my right stick too hard it's only going to crouch, which is not a problem at all. If you're not playing with paddles, I do think Evolved is the best controller scheme that you can use. This will let you have full control over your character's movement while also being able to aim and never have your thumbs come off the sticks. So I do recommend Evolved if you're not playing with paddles. Stick layout, I do default. Interact reload button, I'm doing tap to use and reload. I don't like to hold for anything. I just want to be able to tap it and have it work. It is a little bit annoying around doors sometimes, but overall tap to use and tap to reload, I think is an absolute must. Crouch button, 
I do hold. If you have crouch as hold, there's a lot more movement mechanics you can do in game. Uh, super gliding, bunny hopping for one with controllers. Can do these as toggle, but having it as hold just makes it way easier. Aim button, hold, of course. Survival slot I have as on. Trigger dead zones, I am doing default. You could do this probably as none, but overall, I don't think it's a big deal. So I just do default. For menu cursor speed, I do think you want this to be at least at half, maybe a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher. Generally, you want this to be as high as you possibly can within your ability to control it and not really just like miss armor swap. So if it's too slow, you're going to be looting way too slow and armor swapping too slow. If it's too high, your accuracy probably won't be great with your menu cursor speed. For my movement and aiming settings, I am doing 5-4 in classic. I find this to be pretty reliable for me. 5-4 is something that I've done in a lot of games for a long time. I was doing 4-3 for a pretty long, but I find that in Apex, I need the extra movement so I can just get more movement abilities off and overall just be a little little bit more snappy when I'm looking around. If you are a newer player or less skilled player, or if you're having a hard time with recoil control, I do think like 4-3 is probably the god spot for like control of your gun, if you are struggling at least. But for me, I like to do 5-4. For my per optic settings, basically all the high zoom optics, I'm doing five or very high, and then I do four for four times, and I'm just doing like default, and the one times I do have up a little bit. They're pretty standard. This is nothing too crazy, and I'm not really using these six to 10 times ones that often. Response curve, again, I'm doing classic i was experimenting with linear for a little bit i know a lot of people do like linear but for me i've always been a classic player it's just something that i've used for a long time and i don't really find the need to change at least right now look dead zone i do rotate between small and none right now i am having it on small basically if you have any sort of stick drift that is really bad i do think you need to have it as small if you have a new controller, I actually think having it set as none is fine because you're not really having stick drift on a new controller. And if you have it as none, you basically have the full control over your movement. And you know, as soon as you hit the stick, you're moving. So I do think no look dead zone is pretty important. But again, if you have a lot of stick drift, you could have it as small. Movement dead zone though, this is small, inverted look off. Vibration I have as off. I find that if my hands are not shaking, I'm able to control my recoil a little bit better. And overall, I don't need the feedback of a vibrating controller. For advanced look controls, I will show you what I was using for a long time, but I don't use this right now. I find classic to be just a little bit better, but you can copy these if you do want some advanced look controls. And I'm not having any extra ramp up time with my advanced look controls. But again, I'm not using these right now, so I don't recommend them. I think using classic or linear is pretty much good enough on its own. For the video and audio tabs, I do have my brightness set right in the middle. You could go up a little bit so you're not getting things lost, but this really depends on your monitor. Field of view, you want anything at least over 90. If your field of view is way too low, like this is 70, you can't see anything around your character, which is a huge problem when you're aiming down sights and when you really are just moving around in general. So if you do have your field of view up to like at least 100, I like 104, I'm not really quite sure why, you can just see a lot more. So this is an absolute must. You have to have your field of view at least at 90, I would say. Field of view ability scaling. I have this as disabled. I don't want my field of view to change based on like when I'm octane simming or if I'm in a bloodhound ult. I want it to be consistent across the board. And then sprint view shake. I have this as minimal. I don't want my screen shaking for this. Audio, this is very dependent on your setup. You want the music and the lobby music volume to be down. So the music is not overcrowding certain in-game moments. And do you want the dialogue volume to be a little bit lower as well? So you're not missing sound effects like footsteps that is gonna about do it for my settings video guys be sure to hit that like button i hope you enjoyed let me know what settings you are using in the comments down below and best of luck in season 17 i will see you in the next one